Well, there are new warnings about a possible terror attack on this 4th of July weekend. Last week, the FBI sent a bulletin to local law enforcement agencies to be extra vigilant heading into this holiday. Fences and barricades block streets in the nation's capital ahead of the largest July 4th celebration. And in New York, the NYPD deputy commissioner says hotel staff is being told to closely monitor and report any suspicious activity in hotel rooms. The same heightened level of security is being seen right here in North Texas. Fox Force James Rose is at DTD headquarters with more on where these threats are coming from and also, James, how concerned we should all be. Well, first of all, we should all be very concerned. I mean, we all know what can happen, whether it's a terrorist attack or just an attack like happened here where boards still cover bullet holes. But the bottom line is we as an American population just have to remain vigilant. The key threat we have uh, is from ISIS and from some elements of Al Qaeda. They've shown their ability to reach into the United States. Cities across the country are taking the high level alert from Homeland Security seriously, including Dallas, with officers strategically placed around headquarters and even more obvious signs at substations like Northeast. It has armed officers on lookout and even barricades and squad cars blocking the entrances and exits. Former Deputy Director of the FBI over Intelligence and Counterterrorism, Buck Ravel, says there are no specific threats, but vigilance and readiness are key defenses. Chatter is always up before a big holiday, and, and there's a lot of discussion back and forth what should be done, what needs to be done, but nothing specific. And indeed, when it becomes specific, that's when there's a focus on it. Ravel still has a hand in counterterrorism, helping to monitor the Internet traffic. There have been num a number of situations where people have been recruited and actually gone into a jihad attack uh, without ever having been overseas, without having been trained, without having been any you know, specific contact with the organization other than th through social media and, and the Internet. Social media, Ravel says, is a powerful tool for terrorists, enabling them to communicate, recruit, and even get homegrown Americans to lash out. The two men who attacked the Colwell Center in Garland, Ravel says, had been in contact with known jihadists overseas. They had become connected, they had become radicalized, and they were energized, and they were actually communicating uh, through social media at the time of the attack itself. In the words of one of our revolutionary forefathers, Ben Franklin, distrust and caution are the parents of security. Perhaps a modern day interpretation might be, if you see something, say something. But that's true. I mean, the, the eyes of the American public are places where law enforcement can never be or never will be. If you've got 300 million eyes looking and, and they report unusual or suspicious circumstances, that's something that law enforcement can't do on its own. It's got to, got to depend on the citizenry to, uh, to be responsive. And that's how our nation was founded. You know, all of us have a law enforcement responsibility. We all have a responsibility to make, keep our communities safe. And one of the things Ravel says that makes it so difficult to trace, track, and even arrest terrorists or terrorist sympathizers is the fact that you simply can't just arrest someone on suspicion in America. You need probable cause and you need evidence. And that's why they need the American people to say something if they see something. It all is a vicious cycle, but we can all work together to try and... Uh, get this out of our, our communities. Sure, and I like how he puts it, we all have a responsibility. We all have to be responsible.